Tonight, President Trump in Wisconsin. Oh, because Kenosha was something we did a good job when the governor didn't want us there. As tensions run high after the shooting of Jacob Blake. Why Wisconsin's governor says the visit will only make matters worse. And it could unnecessarily and unintentionally spread the virus to others by not wearing a mask. How the coronavirus crisis is impacting Americans. Plus, election 2020. Don't jump! Don't jump! The campaign heats up as Democratic nominee Joe Biden takes aim at the president. The latest on the 2020 race for the White House. All this and more tonight on Faith Nation. President Trump in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jenna Browder. And I'm John Jessup. The president's visit comes against the backdrop of violent protests following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Now, on the trip, Trump thanked police officers and he visited spots hit hard by riots and looting. CBN White House correspondent Ben Kennedy joins us. And Ben, we understand Trump has been in contact with Blake's family. Yeah, Jenna, John, you're right. Today, President Trump said that he spoke to the Blake family pastor and plans to pick back up talks with faith leaders while on the ground in Wisconsin. President Trump left D.C. bound for Wisconsin, tweeting to thank law enforcement and the National Guard for a job well done. Today, I'm there for law enforcement and for the National Guard because they've done a great job in Kenosha. They put out the flame immediately. It's been a week since protests and riots broke out after Jacob Blake was shot seven times, leaving him paralyzed. Trump promised no tolerance for anarchy and violence. Well, we have the pastor here who's tremendous. He's a tremendous gentleman. I'm going to meet him in a little while. He represents the family. And uh, I think it's probably better off if that's handled locally right now. Wisconsin's governor and Kenosha's mayor had asked Trump to cancel his trip, saying the visit will do little to heal the city's wounds. Today, Trump even blamed the media for the spike in violence. The press should be ashamed of themselves. I think the press is actually, the media is what's fueling this, more so than even Biden, because Biden doesn't know he's alive. Biden pushed back, calling Trump a toxic presence. Fires are burning and we have a president who fans the flames. I want a safe America, safe from COVID, safe from crime and looting, safe from racially motivated violence, safe from bad cops. Let me be crystal clear, safe from four more years of Donald Trump. Now, as a key swing state, the violence in Wisconsin could have electoral implications as a recent poll shows Biden's lead there is tightening. John, Jenna. All right. Thank you, Ben. And joining us now is Justin Gibney, co-founder and the president of the Ant Campaign, a group focused on social justice in the United States. Justin, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. So before the president's visit to Kenosha today, the governor of Wisconsin pled with him to cancel the trip, saying the city needs to heal and the president would hinder that healing. Your thoughts, Justin, is the president's rhetoric preventing healing? Uh, yeah, I think it's playing into uh, what's going on today. Uh, I, I think that, you know, we have to have leadership right now that is not just worried about their uh, election uh, prospects. Uh, and I'll tell you, that's why, to me, uh, the hero in this moment is neither Trump nor um, uh, President Trump nor uh, Joe Biden. The, the hero to me is uh, Jacob Blake's mother, uh, Julia Jackson, who told us all to examine our hearts she, she struck a chord and has refused to be led in either dire any either part partisan direction and cloud what she was trying to say. Uh, she has been just a model of strength in this moment, someone who's going through it, through that pain, and still had the clarity of mind to ask us to uh, examine ourselves and that this destruction and violence is going nowhere. That's who we need to model, and that's who these uh, politicians need to be looking at. Justin, so true. I remember his mother last week said that God created all races and no one is superior to the other. Uh, Justin, last, uh, last time we talked, we talked about ways that the church can respond. Uh, I wonder now if there's anything new you'd recommend as racial tensions have been running hot for some time. Yeah, you know, there's been so much finger pointing and whataboutism and uh, all that stuff. I think it's time for the church, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, to call out your side, uh, to say, look, 
The violence on the left needs to stop. The violence happening on the right needs to stop instead of, you know, just pointing the finger. And that's really where the church can st stand up and be clear to say that it's wrong. I'm not just going to call it the other side. I'm going to call out my side today to make sure that this ends again in the spirit of, of uh, Jacob Blake's mother. Uh, so, Justin, you know, we often hear today people calling for social justice in America. Of course, that is what the Ann campaign focuses on. How do you define social justice? Yeah, that's part of what we focus on. We believe that social justice has to be combined with moral order. So for us, uh, social justice is biblical justice uh, applied to the social uh, context, right? So that means because we all have inherent dignity, because we're made in the image of God, that we should be treated a certain way. And that within society, be it our laws, criminal justice, or and so on, that there's a certain level of dignity in which we must be treated. And, and really, that's what justice is about, making sure that people are treated fairly because we all have innate worth and uh, human dignity. And Justin, we only have about a half minute left. How can we focus on those things as we head into the November election? Well, watch our mouths, right? Watch how we talk and address other people. Watch how we describe other people. We don't have to agree on politics, but we do have to treat each other with a level of respect. And I think that'll go a long way. All right, Justin Gibney with the Ann Campaign. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, tonight, the threat of a teacher strike is forcing the nation's largest public school system to delay sending students back into the classroom. This is COVID cases in the U.S. surpassed the 6 million mark. CBN's Eric Phillips is with us now with that story. Eric? Well, Jenna, several major school systems across the country have already decided to go to school this fall virtually. But New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio had planned on opening some classrooms in person come September 10th. Now, those plans have changed. The 11-day delay is part of negotiations with the teachers' union over COVID safety protocols and will likely avoid what would have been New York's first teacher strike in 50 years and what some were calling a major war. But the Big Apple is not the only city with high anxiety. In Massachusetts, these teachers are refusing to enter their schools as they prepare for students to return, instead working outside on picnic tables and beach chairs. And in Volusia County, Florida, outrage over the decision that school officials are leaving it up to the health department to tell families and staffers about COVID cases. Parents have the right to know what kind of environment they're sending their students into. Uh, employees have the right to know what kind of working conditions they're going into. Infectious disease expert Anthony Fauci says whether schools should return to in-person learning depends on where you live. There are parts of the country that we call green zones where you could without, with real impunity, open schools as long as you're careful about things, wearing masks and things like that. But there are areas of the country, part of the yellow zone and certainly in the red zone, when there's a lot of viral activity in the community, you have to take a careful look about if and how you're going to open the schools. The president suggesting Fauci's advice should be taken with a grain of salt. I disagree with a lot of what he said. He said keep it uh, open for China. That was a big mistake, and he admits it. New analysis from the American Association of Pediatrics indicates while children are less likely to have severe COVID symptoms, rates among children increased this summer faster than they did for the general public. Similarly to adults, we do see that um, black and brown children are more significantly affected by COVID. COVID infection and and to, and and may be more likely to have more severe illness. There's concern some of those same students could be left behind in the virtual classroom, stemming from photos like this one of kids sitting in a Taco Bell parking lot for the free Wi-Fi. Now, despite a drop in daily coronavirus cases, deaths related to the coronavirus are on the rise in 25 states. Today, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin testified on Capitol Hill, and he called for people on both sides of the aisle to come forward and make some headway on important pressing issues like federal unemployment insurance and eviction relief. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Eric. Coming up, election 2020. The latest as the nominees make their cases why they should get your vote and the threats against the election process.
Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Welcome back. We're just a little over two months away from Election Day, 62 days to be exact, and both Joe Biden and President Trump are accusing the other of not being able to keep Americans safe. CBN reporter Mark Martin joins us now with a campaign update. Mark? That's right, John. Both Trump and Biden are not mincing words on the campaign trail, criticizing each other's plans on handling issues like COVID-19 and crime in America. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden directly addressed President Trump, telling him Americans are scared under his leadership. You know what people are afraid of in America? They're afraid they're going to get COVID. They're afraid they're going to get sick and die. And that is in no small part it's because of you. Biden dismissed the accusations that he's easy on crime. Ask yourself, do I look like a radical socialist with a soft spot for rioters? Really? I want a safe America. President Trump spoke out against what he believes is a lack of strong leadership on the other side of the aisle. We have to stop this horrible left-wing ideology that seems to be permeating our country. And basically, it's weakness. It's weakness on behalf of Democrat politicians. Trump also told Fox News that Biden is being controlled by others and won't be able to calm the unrest if elected. Biden won't calm things down. They will take over. They will have won. If Biden gets in, they will have won. He's a weak person. He's controlled like a puppet. So it's not going to be calm things down. It's going to be they will have won. They will have taken over your cities. It's a revolution. You understand that. It's a revolution. Who do you they think is pulling them. Biden's strings? Uh, is it former Obama People officials? that you've never heard of. People that are in the dark shadows. People that oh, What are, does that mean? That sounds like conspiracy theory. Dark shadows. No, what is people that? People that you haven't heard of. They're, they're people that are on the streets, there are people that are controlling the streets. Money is coming from somewhere. Money is coming when, from, how can it be from some very stupid rich people that have no idea that if their thing ever succeeded, which it won't, they will be thrown to the wolves like you've never seen before. Meanwhile, there's a new poll out about how Americans intend to vote. The NBC Survey Monkey weekly tracking poll shows that. 52% of American adults plan to vote early this year in person or by mail. Jenna, back to you. All right, thank you, Mark. And speaking of voting, while some political analysts warn mail-in voting could cause a delay in determining who wins the presidential election, 
Many Americans think results will come in fairly quickly. A new Axios poll finds 36 percent of American adults think we'll know who won the race for the White House on election night. 24 percent think it could take days to get an accurate result, and 14 percent think it may take up to a week. Still 8 percent say they expect it to take more than a month to know whether Joe Biden or President Trump wins the election. Well, Jenna, one question gaining traction as we get closer to the election, how secure will voting be? President Trump has already raised concerns of voter fraud over universal mail-in balloting. But as CBN's Gary Lane explains, the biggest threat could actually come from foreign tampering. Attorney General William Barr first floated the idea about foreign election interference in a New York Times interview last June, saying it is a worrisome issue. Barr said, quote, there are a number of foreign countries that could easily make counterfeit ballots, put names on them, send them in, and it would be very hard to sort out what's happening. President Trump raised similar concerns about Chinese and Russian mail-in ballot interference. Who knows who's getting them? The mailmen are going to get them, and uh, people are going to just grab batches of them. And you talk about China and Russia, they'll be grabbing plenty of them. It's a, it's a disaster. It's a rigged election waiting to happen. Trump administration critics say foreign ballot tampering is highly unlikely because specific codes are used to identify ballots and ballot designs vary from state to state. That makes counterfeiting on a massive scale extremely difficult, if not impossible. Other methods of election meddling are more likely. Utah Senator Mitt Romney is concerned about domestic and foreign electronic vote hacking. There have been efforts to do so in the past. Uh, if that were successful, we would really have no way in some states to know what the right number was. China may pose the greatest threat. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence announced China does not want President Trump re-elected. And Beijing has been, quote, expanding its influence efforts ahead of November 2020 to shape the policy environment. China expert Gordon Chang says China could easily tamper with the election because much is currently done online. But what I focus on is what China has been doing to manipulate opinion. So, for instance, there have been these malicious disinformation campaigns about the coronavirus and about the George Floyd protests. But also China has got its troll farms operating. So we've got all of these fake accounts. In June, Twitter took down 174,000 fake Chinese accounts. Other social media platforms have done the same. So perhaps the easiest way for China or anyone else to sway the November election may come through propaganda and disinformation. That could pose the biggest threat to an uninformed American electorate now relying on social media as its main source of information. Gary Lane, CBN News. Thanks, Gary. Well, a crisis for Christians in Nigeria as they face the daily threat of death. So why isn't the government stopping the terror? That story, next. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. 
In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. And welcome back. The shift in the Middle East is cementing in the wake of the recent peace treaty between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. What's next? Potentially the sale of American warplanes. Senior White House advisor and son-in-law to Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, led the U.S. delegation on the first commercial flight ever between the two nations. Washington's ties to Israel had kept the United States from selling advanced weapons in the region, but observers see the sale of F-35 jets as a key part of the White House deal between Israel and the UAE, which Iran's Supreme Leader today called treason that won't last very long. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, militant Muslims are targeting Christians, hacking hundreds of them to death. CBN senior international correspondent George Thomas reports on what's being done to stop the genocide. After losing ground in Syria and Iraq, the top general of U.S. Special Operations Command in Africa is warning that al-Qaeda, ISIS and other Islamic terror groups are now trying to take over parts of the continent's most populous nation. Major General Dagvin Anderson says Muslim terrorists have set their sights on Nigeria's southern and northwestern regions, and the U.S. is now sharing specific intelligence with the country. So this intelligence sharing is absolutely vital, and we stay fully engaged with the government of Nigeria to uh, provide them an understanding of what these terrorists are doing. Their goal? Eventually turn Nigeria into a Muslim country and force Christians, who make up half the country's population, to either leave or convert. Christians are in the eye of the, the target, and, and they're coming after them. And the numbers are staggering. August 6th, Muslims stormed four remote Christian villages in Kaduna State, killing 22 villagers. July 24th, 21 dead, scores injured, and several Christian homes destroyed by militants. July 19th, 19 people killed when assailants armed with guns and machetes attacked a wedding reception. And the list goes on. Leading human rights groups say what's going on in Nigeria is a genocide. If you look at what's happened uh, on the last 20 years, George, it's just massive, massive number of attacks against Christians. Uh, look, 50 to 70,000 have been murdered. For years, the main terror group was Boko Haram, which seeks to overthrow the government here and create an Islamic state. They go after Christians and moderate Muslims. They push a hardline Muslim agenda. It is their intention to establish a caliphate and to uh, just rid all of Nigeria and West Africa of any Western influence whatsoever. Now, there's a new actor on the scene. In Nigeria's so-called Middle Belt region, where the Muslim North meets the Christian South, a terror group made up of Muslim Fulani herders are killing thousands of Christians. More than 1,400 Christians were hacked to death in just the first seven months of 2020 by Fulani herders. Unfortunately, the secular media are uh, quite often biased and trying to present this as a tribal conflict rather than religious. Nigeria's president, a Muslim, has so far done very little to stop the bloodshed. His police and army are also mostly made up of Muslims. The attackers are never captured. They are not prosecuted. The security services respond very slowly. A, a full day can go on with attacks happening and no security shows up. And frequently, the government officials will provide cover. Helpless and vulnerable to almost daily attacks, leading Catholic bishops are now urging Nigerian Christians to defend themselves. Human rights groups are asking the White House to appoint a special envoy to help end the persecution of Christians in Nigeria. Unless the world takes note and puts pressure, economic pressure, sanctions, uh, visa bans on the officials who are responsible for this travesty and for not reigning in the terror, then uh, Nigeria will continue to be a bloodbath. 
Meanwhile, King's Group is helping more than 3,000 Christians who lost their businesses, homes, farms or land to Boko Haram and Fulani militant attacks. International Christian Concern has created communal farms to give victims the opportunity to rebuild their lives. When they get back to work, the family is fed, they have a future, the kids can go back to school. It's a restoration of hope, it really is. Um, and it's much more than just economics. It's it's the whole community, it's all the parts of life, the emotional, the physical, the mental. It means a lot to them. George Thomas, CBN News. Still ahead, from battling sickness to fighting fires, a pediatric surgeon takes on the California wildfires. Region's first ROTC graduate student. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Finally tonight, as we've all seen, California's been hit hard by the wildfire season this year. The Dolan Fire in Big Sur has already burned 28,000 acres. Yeah, and the blaze is only about 25% contained. The firefighters are working hard to boost that number, and that includes one unique volunteer. Dr. Jim Betts is a pediatric surgeon by profession, but in his spare time, the nearly 73-year-old works as a volunteer firefighter at EMT. It's an honor and a privilege to serve. This is a very unusual year. We've got COVID and the pandemic. Uh, we have the fires in Big Sur. We have our hospital duties here. I don't play golf. I don't play tennis. To me, it's been a privilege to be able to become a pediatric surgeon as well as a firefighter. Yeah, he fights fires. Well, as he approaches his 73rd birthday, he looks good. Dr. Betts says he has no plans to retire from either surgery or fighting fires. Jenna, I'll have whatever he has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he makes it look, yeah, he makes all of us look like slackers here. Well, that's going to do it for tonight's Faith Nation. Have a great evening.